Hello, and welcome to our podcast. For the last three years, Hope Church South Bedfordshire here in the UK has had people meeting on weekdays to discuss God's Word together. We've moved this discussion onto this podcast so others in our congregation, our area, and the wider world can enjoy God's Word along with us. In this episode, we're looking at the book of Mark in the New Testament, and we expect as we read, God will teach us and we will help each other learn more. As you listen to the prayer, the reading, the discussion, while you're listening, ask God to reveal things to your heart. The book of Mark was written so that you would come to know who Jesus is. And our desire is that we will all come to know him better as we look at this together. Well, good morning and welcome to our podcast this morning. We're looking at Mark 5, verse 21 to 43. And Jenny has very kindly offered to pray for us. And uh, Bob is going to read for us. Father, just thank you for bringing us here this morning, Lord. Thank you that we can look at your word and see again how amazing you are, Lord. And I just pray today you'll speak to us individually and corporately, Lord, so we know exactly um, what you want us to do, what you want us to say. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 A dead girl and a sick woman. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, A large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. <clears throat> he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. Mm. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came home to the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep, but they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, They were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Bob. And a wonderful passage. We're following the story as Mark expands who Jesus is to us. 
And yesterday we had a man who had been demonized um, falling down at Jesus' feet and, and being delivered and set free. But but looking at this, this story, Mark's got an incredible way of showing the impact of Jesus on local communities, showing the impact on daily lives, on individuals. And and so the, the picture that's painted here, as he, he tells it, is about Jairus, a synagogue ruler. And they were laymen, l- largely Pharisees, people like that. And he falls down at Jesus's feet. And that's a real sign of how how needy he was, but also how respectful towards Jesus he was. And there's some of these things you see in the story, this really graphic things that people who were reading this would have understood some of the background of. And and as we're looking at this, you also find the woman uh, again falls down at the feet of Jesus. But we see something new happening here. So we've seen Jesus touch people and, and heal them. We've seen Jesus reach out to others. We've seen him touch a leper and, and the leper be healed. But actually in this we see someone touching Jesus. Mm. And what we're opened up to is there's a two-way street here. It's not just a one way <laughs> that things happen. It's happening another way as well. And we've got these incredible stories, both together, uh, inseparable, um, and um, show the impact of Jesus just walking down <laughs> a street and what it was like. And you can picture the crowds around them, you know, who touched you? Well, you've got so many other people around you, you know, the the, the kind of picture of how it Mark, Mark's put it in a way that we can understand, maybe catch a glimpse of what it would have looked like, but also the deep impact in these lives as Jesus goes. And I think yesterday we were looking at Jesus going all the way across a stormy sea, (laughs) bringing calm to the sea and then arriving, seeing one person set free from demons and then hops back on the boat. And we, we pick up the story now after he comes off the boat, the other end. And that's just so powerful that Jesus is willing to touch the one and and that was so powerful yesterday so i'll open it up today and we'll move on and see what stands out to people what what's touched your hearts this morning just one small thing really just the detail that um jairus fell at jesus feet we've mm-hmm. seen this several times uh, over the last few days in our, our studies people uh, falling at jesus feet mm-hmm. um so desperate are they and so trusting that jesus can help them um that they fall at his feet in these desperate situations that they're in situations yeah. really sort of lost causes the uh, the demon possessed man um nothing seemed to be possible to uh, release him from his uh, situation um the same with jairus's daughter she was a um, almost dead she was on her deathbed um and he came in desperation i think to jesus as a a last resort fell at his feet and they they were starting to see that he he, jesus was no ordinary man weren't they um you know it was just people started to realize that you know who is this man because um the things that were happening and um i think the lady that, that, that pushed forward to touch Jesus because she was afraid to sort of make herself known, really. Um, you know, she had, she was desperate, like you say, Bob. I think when people are desperate, they're more likely to come to Jesus, really. And um, she was desperate to, to be healed. And she'd spent all her money, it says, all her money, everything. she tried everything. And people mm-hmm. like that now, aren't they? They go to different things for healing, different things they're looking for and um, none of them satisfy because Jesus is the only one that can satisfy and give us you know eternal life and um, it's just amazing that um, this woman had you know so much desperation that she did uh, push through and Jesus knew didn't he He knew that the power had gone out of him and uh, Mm -hmm. that's amazing really so Jesus was doing multiple things here as he always does. So, um, you know, he had time for everyone. That's what I was thinking, you know, he didn't just um, heal one person. 
and as people came to him. But really, he draws us to him, doesn't he? At first, he's drawing people to him, and then, then they're now they're running to him, aren't they? Because they've mm. seen who he is. Well, they don't know who he is, but they've seen his his compassion and his love and his power. So mm. that's the same today. When we see who you know, see his love, that will draw us to him. Thanks, Jenny. And um, just looking at my notes here um, on the side of my Bible, um, the your faith has made you well, which is what he said to the woman, would suggest both physical and spiritual healing. Uh, mm. For the Greek sozo can mean either to heal or to mm. save. The woman's faith in Jesus for physical healing at the time mm. became faith in him for salvation from sin. And so they're saying wow. that it wasn't just the spirit, it was it wasn't just a physical, there was also the spiritual mm -hmm. and, and the word sozo is used, which is really wow. interesting. Um so yeah, thanks, Jenny. Uh, Sue. Yeah, because we're talking about crowds coming, but it seemed to be building up and building up. And now this is a passage where someone can trust and have a relationship and she's thinking well I can approach this person you know it's not like other rulers that she felt that if, she, if if there's a compassion within there must have been something that drew her that she she was afraid yet she did it so it was a bit like oh when we want to know God more perhaps or oh, do we go there or do we not but she was so in need that it pushed her to do it and when she'd done it as you say it must have felt and then he felt it going out of him. So that shows you how connected Jesus is with us. You know what I mean? It's amazing. And it, it always, and that thought of, you know, bleeding all those years and then being healed. Could you imagine? Can't even imagine it, can you? It's so, so deep. And then the touching this is made me nearly cry when he took the child, you know, holds her hand, took her by the hand and said to her, you know, little girl, I say to you, get up, you know, so gentle. So it must be so different to what they used to in them times to have a, you know, to have someone just so compassionate and so willing to speak and, and see all these miracles and in the depths of the wailing and the crying. And we can't even imagine the atmosphere sometimes, can we? People was not in that era now. But, um, yeah, just to have someone walk there and know that if you touch, just touched his cloth of his cloak, I mean, nothing big. But in them days, it was like massive. But she was so willing. And I think that's why we have to be willing, don't we? We have to be surrendering. We have to not get to the point where we're really ill to do it. But when we're really ill, that's when we call out to God. We don't need God when we're well. <laughs> when we're well, we don't need God. When we're ill, it's like, oh, well, perhaps there may be a God. Perhaps he is there. Perhaps, I, perhaps if I do believe, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think I think it's some some places. It's we, we, when we are well, we do need God as well, but but we're more oh, yeah. aware of it when when oh, we yes, when we've got I mean. the um, when, yeah. when we're in need, and I, and I when think that need. that need causes people to cross a boundary they wouldn't otherwise cross. Yeah, Jairus yeah, wouldn't probably. have thrown himself on the floor for anything. Um, but he got to a point of need where he did, and he crossed a line. And this woman crosses a line. She would have had to um, not be not allowed in public. And if she did go into public, she had to tell people she was unclean. Mm -hmm. And she did neither of those things, and and sneakily touched his robe, you know. And and actually, he did. She didn't touch his skin. She didn't. She didn't touch it. She touched yeah. his robe. And actually, uh, he couldn't have felt that, but he knew. And that's so yeah. powerful. Yeah, Bob? Yeah, this uh, a woman had not only suffered physically for 12 years, she'd been uh, a, like a social outcast. She'd been mm -hmm. unclean for 12 years. Um, can't imagine what that must have been like just to be uh, outcast. Um, people would be afraid to approach her. Um, I suppose we we got a, a taste of that during COVID, didn't we? We had to prove yes. that we'd mm. been vaccinated yeah. to go on a flight, yeah. or we'd be, you know, people would be anxious about mingling with others in case yeah. they had COVID. So we get a, a little bit of a, yeah. a glimpse of uh, what it might have been <laughs> like to this woman, uh, how she'd suffered. But um, Jesus specialised in dealing with the outcasts, didn't he? Um, you know, the leper was in a very similar sort of situation. He was on the edge of society. 
uh, rejected by people because of his his disease. But Jesus uh, wasn't afraid to approach, to touch, to reach out to these people. Um, nothing was impossible for him. He gives more than we can uh, more than we can expect sometimes, doesn't he? Mm, definitely. It's interesting how Jesus put the people out that were wailing because mm. they believed she was dead. Well, she was dead, but. You know, he they were sort of not open for a miracle, were they? It, so there was an unbelief in them. So he put them out first so that it was, you know, there was nothing to, um, it was only faith in that room, really, of, because um, Jesus could do that then. I don't know if that makes a difference, but um, it's strange that he had to put them out first to actually um, heal the child. Yeah, I think it's also. I, I'm thinking about that now, Jenny. I, I think the um, there were so many traditional ways of grieving, and yeah. and actually that were about to be triggered. Jesus managed to stop all of that by saying he'd go in with the family, mm-hmm. and actually his willingness to go in would have made yeah. him ceremonially unclean. Um, in you know, yeah. but, but as we found before, Jesus doesn't become unclean. He touches disease, and it it, mm. it gets healed, not him getting dirtied by it. And and so so there's that kind of concept. So he's going in. So he's paused the morning. He's paused mm. a bit of that with his statements, and then he steps in. And I guess if he'd been in an environment where all these people were traditionally wailing and all that kind of commotion and all that kind of thing wasn't the environment he wanted. He wanted a very quiet, very private. And and this is something that I was thinking about with Jesus. Um, surely Jesus, with his authority, could have just spoken over a crowd. Everyone in this crowd be healed and they'd all be healed. All demons go, boom, they're all gone. But there's something yeah. about Jesus where he's willing to wander down a street, accompanied by a huge crowd, yeah. with Jairus walking alongside him. You know, it's not like he's he's in a rush. He needs to zoom here and zoom there. No, he 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 walks with him down the street. The compassion that's with him, walking with this broken man, yeah. and and he walks down the street with him to the place where his daughter has died. And and actually goes with him into the room with the dead. Or, you know, there's there's an accompanying. You know, Jesus is deeply personal, and he's deeply relational. Mm. He could all do it from afar. He has got, he's got the authority to do things from afar. We we know with the centurion, he says, you know, go. You know, he says, you you can tell me what to do. I understand authority. You know, you can do this from a distance. Jesus doesn't do it from a distance. He, he does it with people right in the situation, in the mess, in the pain, in the discomfort. And and I, I just think that's incredible. It's, it teaches us how Jesus cares about us. Mm-hmm. It's individual. He cares about our needs. Our, he cares about our pain. He cares about our sorrows. You know, and he understands it because he, he lived as one of us. And And I think that's just so powerful. It's funny, at the end, again, he says, give strict orders not to let anyone know about this. Hmm. It's, again, he says that again, doesn't he? And told them to give us something to eat. Really sort of matter of fact. And in fact, he knew, well, he knew there's more to do. I don't know, perhaps there was a thing that he had to plan the plan out. Or how, what, what do others think about that? Um, I think if um, if everyone knew and it went, you know, people would have tried to make him a king or something like that. And it wasn't his time, was it? You know, no. he had only had a certain amount of time to be on this earth to show who he was. And um, if they would tried to do that before, it would have been he wouldn't have gone to the cross, maybe, you know, and he had to go to the cross, which mm. is obviously a terrible thing. But it was a beautiful thing as well. So, um, you know. You can't actually change what God's plans are, can you really? You know, no. God's got a plan and a certain timing, and even in our own lives, you can't do, you know, push it forward really. You know, it's always his timing is, is perfect. And I think um, the men, you know, people run after sort of celebrities, don't they, in a way? And, um, you know, Jesus has got a lot to do, as you say, Sue. Mm. Has a lot to do. And, um, 
it's a certain timing and he had to die at Passover as well, you know, because it had to be fulfilled to um, the, you know, what the prophets had said as well. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. And there's an, this angle of the woman touching Jesus rather than Jesus touching the woman. Mm. And I think that dynamic of, Actually, Jairus is reaching out to Jesus. He's not touching him. He's falling at his feet. But that yeah. that reaching out to Jesus, that that touching him, that wanting just to touch his cloak. If I can only touch his cloak, I'll be healed. And there's something that says something about our hearts and how we respond to Jesus. You know, we've had Jesus telling parables, which draws people to have a look at things and tease things out. But now we're seeing situations where where people are reaching out to Jesus for sozo, healing, salvation, all together. You know, that, that the saving and the healing, you know, you think that's that's incredibly powerful. And and I think there, there's many people today in their predicaments reaching out to Jesus and he meets them. And I think that's very powerful. I was thinking the picture of Jesus going into the room where Jairus' daughter was and he invited Jairus and his wife and then the two, two others. And, and I, I wondered whether... I just thought that was beautiful that the parents would would see what what Jesus did, and also um, for the other disciples there, whether it could have been slightly a training exercise um, of of the the how to, um, and and I felt that that very moving, and why he chose those two in particular. It's <clears throat> made lots of questions in my mind, but they were obviously very close to him and uh, and just to see and watch and be involved in that that sort of almost like a time capsule to to see the power of God and and who Jesus was and and, I, and what spoke to me too was the gentleness of Jesus to that girl and um, the compassion, but the gentleness and just the touch. And I think sometimes, um, sometimes <clears throat> we can touch people and not necessarily have to say, but I believe that God can move through um, lots of, of our senses. And I think touch is one of them. Also, so if we touch people um, in, in, a, in a gentle way, God can move in power through that. It's not necessarily what we say. And I think it's almost to open our eyes to see the power of God and how he can move through us uh, to other people. Thanks, Faith. I was just thinking about you, what you said, Faith, about the, the two uh, people that he had with him. But in, like, uh, in Jewish law, you had to have two or three witnesses to everything, didn't you? So I wonder if that's also why, you know, they had those other people, because um, they had witnesses. I mean, obviously, they had the parents, but, um, you know, they had somebody. So if people, quest, you know, question why this and, you know, and even today we have to be, you know, we have to do things. We witnesses sometimes, don't we? You know, we have um, have witnesses to things that we do. Um um, so I, I don't know if that's why I'm not sure that's one of the reasons I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he took, um, Peter, James and John in with him. Yeah. And, and so, so you, I think they were brothers, James and John, um, mm-hmm. the sons of thunder. <laughs> so, um, it, but, but taking them in, he's got witnesses, but he's also got trainees. And I think yeah. that that's really interesting. That, both those dynamics. I just I can't get my head out of the touch bit. Um, what uh, Faith said, I think there's so much in the touching and the hands, and I think it's holding hands and being with people. And I think this is a time that where people do want to be listened to and they want to just be with. I think this is a time where people need um, times of 
you know, just to be together and even not talk together. There's a real passion in holding hands and just being with people. Yeah. And I think today and this era, I think it's more needed than anything. And Jesus knows everything. And he, even in the little details, the little details of holding that child's hands, there is a big, big message that we need just to listen and be with each other. Yeah, that's really touched me this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think we've got uh, to the end of our time. I think there's plenty there to take away and 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 learn from and be impacted by. But just the beauty of Jesus and his relational uh, way of working with people it has a tenderness about it. There's not a rush. He's he's not frantically trying to 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 hit his sales targets. He's not trying to frantically run here and there. He's walking through life with people. He's touching life. He's into some of the most needy situations. Mm. And I just think it it's beautiful and it shows us so much more about Jesus. And um, hopefully we'll see more um, as, as we move forward um, with this and enjoy this together. But thank you all for your comments this morning. Really beautiful morning. Uh, looking at some fantastic <laughs> um, heart of Jesus and and how it impacts communities anyway god bless thank you for joining us today if you'd like to find out more about hope church south bedfordshire you can find out off our website www.hopecentral.co.uk also you may like to visit us we meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in tillsworth part of dunstable uh, wider area and um, you're welcome to visit us we meet at half 10 in the morning and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there or alternatively you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our youtube channel which is also under Hope Church, South Bedfordshire. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope God blessed you loads.